Hey, what's happening? What's popping, everybody? Today we got our week three team builder versus my man Cloud. So, um, we're gonna look at Cloud's team right here. He has the means of Toxic Pex, Skarmory, Mega Beedrill, Floridus, Arcanine, Hitmontop, Manetra, Flygon, Selby, Sharpedo, Frostlass, and Toro. So, initially, his team is probably the bulkiest if not one of the bulkier teams in the league he has an intimidate core he's got the toxipex skarmory core he's got options to hazard stack he has a couple offensive options with you know mega Beedrill being his his main breaker and kind of going from there that's uh his team but he does have a lot of weaknesses as well um i think he could have drafted some of these mons a little bit later and because of that i don't think he has one of the i think he has unfortunately one of the worst drafts uh sim simply because um he could have he does have good mods on his team but he could have got them in later rounds and because you picked up some some of the mods so early that meant that um you uh didn't have the option to get like the best of the best uh from there on out so um nevertheless his team still is really scary and there's a couple of very very scary things things that I have to prepare for and I have to play around correctly so um, as far as my team goes um, I actually did have a seventh member on this team and originally I did want to build my team around the Thunderous Eye. Thunderous Eye is a humongous threat to him because last week he got swept by an agility life orb Zapdos and the thing with Thunderous is Thunderous and Zapdos hit around you know they, they hit the same um, as far as power goes, but Thunders has access to a lot more coverage moves, so um, I could definitely go s uh, Sludge Wave or you know something like that. So originally, I wanted to build around an Agility Thunderous with three coverage moves, but um, because of what happened last week, I'm pretty confident that Cloud will probably prepare for thunderous eye a little bit more because he knows that electric types are very scary for him uh, especially because his main defensive core just auto loses to thunderbolts in general um and his uh electric resists are flygon which dies to hb ice unless it's yachi berry or salt vest or something like that spit f selby and kind of go going from there but um i decided you know what I'm pretty confident that he's going to check Thunder's Eye, so I wanted to also go a different route that still should be just as effective, and it's not as obvious as the Thunder's Eye. So, um, the first mod that I have on my team are, the first two actually, are my two breakers, and this are, you know, these are the mods that are going to help me get the kills and kind of go from there. As long as I play these mons correctly, I'll start chipping away at his team, getting Okos to a KOs, and kind of going from there. So the first mon is Gardevoir. So this Gardevoir actually to a KOs everything on his team except for like random assault vest users and um, Florges. So because Florges is like extremely extremely fat. So naturally, without any berries or you know this this and that, Florges is technically is real switch into guard for because um i do pack the signal beam for the means of selby and i do pack thunderbolt for the skarmory and even a specially defensive skarmory does get to it go by thunderbolt and even a berry on selby once again gets to a ko'd by modest uh max special attack signal beam so Another really cool thing about the Gardevoir is that it does have the trace ability, and this is going to come into play a, a heck of a lot in this match, because I can trace a lot of different things, and if I was a choice scarf Gardevoir, which I almost did, I can choice scarf, um, outspeed the Mega Beedrill, and I get adaptability, and adaptability psychic pretty much just cleans up, but unfortunately, um, I didn't want to go that route because it would have been really, really cool. And obviously, I'm well. First of all, yeah, yeah, I, I would have got the outspeed, but uh, that would have been really cool. But I decided to go against that, and um, yeah, so I decided the Breaker Gardevoir is going to be a little bit better as the bulk is also going to help me. So once again, we have already discussed he has an Intimidate Core. Um, 
he potentially could have Lightning Rod Manetric again because I do have a Thunderous. I could potentially trace the Lightning Rod, but he might not have Lightning Rod as it will give a boost to Guard Force. So kind of watch out for that. I always trace the regen ability on Toxapex if he does decide to bring that. And Sludge Bombs are only going to be doing around 30-ish percent and psychics easily going to be able to kill okay, toxic so regardless if he wants to stay in or not i can set up wishes on it and you know kind of going from there and um also iron heads from skarmory if he's not invested i can also wish up those on top of that so uh yeah gardevoir is is going to be my main win condition here as uh my next mon here is going to be the kiram black so the things that gardevoir doesn't break i need my kiram black to break so the coverage on here is dragon claw fusion bolt iron head root so the speed tier is the speed creep um a selby now the selby obviously can outspeed uh kiram if it really got super super fast being um you know a timid max speed selby but i can't really obviously speed creep max speed uh, selby with the kiram black and i decided He's either going to be a bulky uh, Selby or he's going to be a speedy, nasty plot super Selby. Um, so this is kind of like the middle grounds of, of speed. So um, the coverage from which again, Dragon Claw, that's going to be my main stab. That's going to be able to get two KOs on a lot of his members. But he does have an Intimidate core with Arcanine. So defensive Arcanine can check it. Uh, Kieran Black does have access to Earth Power, but there's no way I'm going to bring a special variant of Kieran Black when he has a Forges. Um, Fusion Bolt. Fusion Bolt is going to be really good for uh, the means of Skarmory and Forges because Forges will be taking probably about 30-ish, 40-ish, depending on if what his investments are in Forges. And um, obviously Skarmory does not want to be taking uh, Fusion Bolts and um, it doesn't, because if I was choice banded, it would actually one shot the, any variant of Skarmory, but, um, I'm not life orb. I'm, you know, I'm max attack, but fusion bolt does not one shot through this dirty, but, uh, yes, yeah, fusion bolt still does it a lot. And I can actually roost off iron heads on this too. So that's really cool. Uh, last thing is iron head. So as we mentioned, the only real switch in a Gardevoir is his Florges. And random AV users, this isn't that. But it's most likely going to be the Florges if he does bring that. So, I have a lure to Florges. Florges, you would expect to kind of sort of be a switch in a Kieran Black. Kind of, sort of. I do have coverage for it. But I really, really am having coverage for it as I do have the Steelium Z. I decided I'm going to bring a, um, a Z-Move member on... Uh, my my Z-Move mod is going to be Kieran Black because if he's not very berry... Iron Head does 170% to Florges. So that's a dead Florges. And Roost, because we've already discussed, I can like Roost off a lot of his defensive mods, even the Toxic Pecs. Kind of going from there. So that's really good for me. I can break his team with Kieran Black and Gardevoir. And now I need to check his offensive mods from here. I think I can break his entire team with Kieran Black and Gardevoir. So now I need to check his defensive mods. And I decided. I'm a little bit weak to Arcanine. I didn't notice how scary Arcanine was because initially you always think of defensive Arcanine, but then I looked at offensive Arcanine, and then I realized like that's gonna put a lot of work in versus me because Flare Blitz, so Fire and Electric hit my whole team for very scary damage. Like I don't, I don't have a switch into Fire types in general. Kind of, sorta. I mean, obviously I have a Volcanion that quad resists, but Wild Charge does a ton of damage to the Volcanion, so I decided. I definitely could be the walk-on berry, but I don't want to be walk-on berry because that only works once, and then he can get the outspeeds, and he might predict that, and if he predicts that, then I'm a goner. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to bring Choice Scarf Volcanion, and this doesn't outspeed all of his mons, being it doesn't outspeed the Mega Beedrill, and it doesn't outspeed Taurus and uh, Frostlass, but... Um, I definitely could creep a little bit for the Tauros and Frostlass, but I decided I needed a little bit more bulk because um, Sharpedo, once again, a couple of things about this team of six, I don't have a dark resist, I don't have a ground resist, so we gotta, we gotta have checks for Flygon and we gotta have checks uh, for Frostlass and a couple other things, but anyways, yeah, so 
here I decided I'm going to bring a Troy Scarf Fall Canyon. So what this does is the coverage on here, Steam Eruption, is just going to be my neutral stab that I'm going to be spamming uh, along with Flamethrower. I don't need to run Fire Blast. I don't need a chance to miss. That'd be horrible. But um, uh, Flamethrower is going to be really good for the Selby, which is his main water resist. <laughs> I wouldn't call Sharpedo water resist to begin with. Um, but Steam Eruption is very, very spammable for him. Earth Power, Earth Power. Uh, two of Kales, the Toxic Packs, and that's pretty good for Volcanion. You know, Earth Power is doing a ton of damage. And then Sludge Wave. Sludge Wave is to make sure I two KO the means of Florges. So, um, I can outspeed. So, once again, the Choice Scarf, I can outspeed an offensive Arcanine. I could switch into a Flare Blitz, take little damage because I'm kind of bulky naturally, and it's a quad resist, and then I can revenge him with a Steam Eruption making sure hopefully i'm not in range of extreme speed if he does pack that so um yeah sludge wave just pretty much obliterates sharpedo so yeah i can also with a little bit more bulk i can take i can take a hit from the mega vidro i can take a hit from the frost last i can take a hit from some of his mons but I can't, because I can't really take a hit from the Minetric, that was the mon that I decided to speed creep. And yeah, so kind of going from there, the scary things right now to Gardevoir, Kieran Black, and Volcanion is now I need a little bit of bulk on my team. Because now he has a couple win conditions, being if he breaks my team with the Arcanine, offensive like Arcanine or Beedrill in general, yeah, basically I don't want to lose to last mon mega Beedrill or last mon sweeper life orb sharpedo as once again i don't have a dark resistance in that so as far as sharpedo goes i have a lure for you mr sharpedo i have a culverberry mew so the evs on mew are to make sure that earthquake banded earthquake does not to a ko mew and or plus one after dragon dance flygon earthquakes do not to a ko and I can just roost him off. And Psychic will 2 KO any variant of Flygon as I am kind of, I'm a bulky offensive Mew. And um, I definitely could have did, did a little bit of speed creeping for the Selby. But um, if he's a defensive Selby, I have pretty much nothing to worry about. I, I'm pretty sure I don't have to worry about anything as uh, Selby can't really do much to me. And I can just signal beam it and just knock it out of the park. So... The EVs on here is to make sure I get a one shot on a Sharpedo and I also two shot any variant of Selby, including berries and stuff like that. And um, I didn't really need any spit F. I could have maybe sped creep the Selby, but I decided I'm this, yeah, I'm not, I'm not too worried about the Selby trying to break my Mew. And if it's like, as far as a min speed selby so the next mon that is very uh, uh sufficient on my team is going to be the registeel because i need a switch in to the mega beedrill as it just i don't have a switch in i don't, I don't have a resist to any of them and registeel is a pretty good check the mega beedrill so i have stealth rocks iron head uh thunderbolt and toxic so we're going to be going over uh the four moves here first um, Stealth Rocks is pretty obvious to pressure the means of Mega Beedrill. Now, he does have a lot of hazard options, and I'll be most likely defogging as much as possible. I mean, it's it, it, it's very situational with what kind of team he has and kind of what the, how the match goes because um, I definitely think it's very important to keep up Rocks to pressure his main two offensive mons, being Arcanine and Mega Beedrill. Um, rocks are important for them, but once again, I also need to defog if it gets pretty scary with his hazard stack. But the EVs on here is to make sure I live like plus two drill runs for days, and I can uh, just iron head the Mega B drill and get a two KO on that. Um, Thunderbolt was kind of a filler move because it hits his Toxapex Skarmory. Obviously, it doesn't hit it hard, but it's the best like middle ground option, and I can also do a ton of damage to the Sharpedo. I think it does like 70%. Thunderbolt does like 70% to the Sharpedo. So um, that's really good. And then Toxic. Toxic is 
really good status. I can toxic things like a bulkier Flygon. I can pretty much toxic anything I've seen. Toxic the uh, Flygon, the Hitmontop, the Arcanine if it's defensive, the Florgis. I can PP stall the Florgis out of Teal Bells if he does have that. It's a really good uh, switch into the Florgis too, as Florgis, even if it's a Calm Mindset, Registeel will beat any variant of Florgis and kind of go from there. So, so now, um, just looking at my team of five, it's looking really solid just just from these uh, five. So now I'm just kind of thinking like, how do I just cement my team and kind of go from there? And I decided um, I wanted to have Kof Rodriguez as my last mod. So um, I might regret having Kof Rodriguez as my sixth mod instead of Thunderous, but once again, at this stage, I think that Gardevoir and Kieran Black can pretty much wall break. Uh, this can revenge stuff. And I could have also had a Scarfer to probably outspeed the Mega Beedrill. But he does have a speed boosting Sharpedo that has the ability to speed boost plus protect. And because of that... Um, I'd, and plus, you know, even DD Flygon outspeeds some of the potential Scarfers that I would bring. I decided, you know what, I'm just going to bring Coffred Regis here as um, it serves me as kind of a defensive backbone without making sure, like, if he tries to pressure my team with, you know, offensive Flygon that gets my Mew Whittled or this, this, and that. I think that I wanted to have a little bit more of a defensive backbone. That's all Coffer Grigas is here for, but it's it's pretty good. Um, I don't really need it to sweep, but the only coverage that I felt like I needed was Shadow Ball coverage. As um, Once again, because my Volcanion, it's not sped creep to outspeed the means of Tauros. Any variant of Tauros, like no Tauros can be Coffer Grigas. And I can just burn it and then just kind of go from there. I can burn it. Get a paint split off and just wait until burn kills it or you know something similar to that so um that's what the car Grigus is for it's there to check the flag on it can take a hit it can spin block with the hitmon top if i need it to it can take a hit from the arcanine um and um well it, the mummy ability doesn't really help me like for arcanine because it's probably gonna have uh, intimidate or whatever but um, as far as the mummy ability goes, it's gonna the mummy ability is pretty good in this matchup if he does want to try to like if if I can get a prediction on the Mega Beedrill or if he just doesn't have the coverage to hit Coffer Grigus. Um if I get the mummy ability on Mega Beedrill, Mega Beedrill only hits like half as hard because it's not adaptability anymore, it's only mummy. So um that's pretty good. And I can just kind of like chip away at his team with pain splits and kind of go from there. So this is my team of six. Um, I think it's pretty solid. Um, I think once again, I have to play around the Arcanine. I think Arcanine is like the scariest thing of all. I think it's definitely a must bring. I'm curious to see what his uh, uh, checks to the means of Kiron Blackguard, Gardevoir, Thunderous, um, and hopefully... I don't get overwhelmed by hazards as he has so many uh, means of, of hazards and I can't really take advantage of him setting up hazards other than just, just trying to defog them. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this team builder for week three. The, the game should be up here pretty soon and keep supporting the Detroit Butterfreeze. I'm signing out guys. Peace.